morning, everyone. Looking around at all the stuff. I'm like, I know. I There's always socks that. everywhere. <laughs> Yeah. There's always socks. Always and it's socks. never the same person's twice. It's sometimes yours, sometimes Gigi, sometimes mine. There's always socks. Um, anyway. That sucks. Good morning, everyone. Day seven? Can't Holy be. Can't be. That is that is wild. I am heading out. Actually, I really need to go. I feel like I'm in my 2003 best. I've got like flare jeans on. The, I don't know what it is about my outfit, but I feel like it's me in 2003. Nice. It's bizarre. <laughs> Like, I'll see people, like, really, really, like, people way fashion forward, and it is exactly what we were wearing. I'm like, pretty sure like, I'm back like, then, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's, like, freaky. Pretty sure I'm wearing exactly what I would have worn in 2003 either, but I never changed. <laughs> also, <laughs> I came back. I'm still just wearing. I was wearing... just thinking, this must be what people, like, did any of you guys, if you're older than we are, is this how you felt if, like, you know, when the 80s came back and you were like, oh, my gosh, that's what we were wearing, or when the 70s, not when they, yeah, because they'd come back. Well, it's funny. I was just gone, talking yeah. about that. Now, we were like, you know, everyone always says, oh, it's, you know, everything old is new again and it comes back. And I'm like, yes, but to a certain extent. I'm like, you don't see people with like big beehives. Like, I don't see the, like that ever coming back. Like I don't see like people wearing style. like poodle skirts again. Like, you know. That's a good point. Like, it, it comes only back in certain. So much. Like flapper dresses come back like to hey, a kind of extent. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's not like you're yeah. going to see exactly the same thing again. That's but true. like, there's a lot of 90s stuff that's really big right now. It's 90s have been big for a while. I think now, we, Tyler, we've moved into the 2000s. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to say, and that is insane. Yeah, yeah. That's why I'm planning on wearing, like, you know, carrying my club around. I'm going to wear my, like, uh, saber tooth tiger tunic, because I figured that's coming back. The caveman era? Caveman era is coming back soon, so. We'll call you Tyler Flintstone. And I'll wear my fanny pack. <laughs> well, those, those are back. Mixed decades. <laughs> those have been back for a while. Decades. Maybe they're on their way out. I don't know. <laughs> it is very cold. <laughs> I don't think I have a warm enough. This is more like a, you know, sweater jacket thing. Swack it. <laughs> Shack it. Wait. Well, anyway. Um, so got my nails done, like bright red. This was like the perfect tone of red that I wanted. So I'm very happy. I feel like sometimes when I get red nails, I go too, it's like too deep of a red. And it doesn't, I don't know. With my fair skin, I feel like it doesn't quite look the way I want it to look. So very happy with this red. Um, for those that are curious, I would give you a color, but I don't, it's not like a nail polish. It's a dipped powder. So it's, I mean, I, there is a color, but it's like a specific powder you'd have to buy. And anyway, <clears throat> so heading home, need to warm up. <laughs> so cold. Anyway, shout out to my nail tech, Eric, if you're watching. Hey, thank you. <laughs> so we have these water bead, like sensory bin kind of thing that we bought. I'm not even sure where we got this. I don't know, some craft store, I'm not, I don't remember. Um, but these, they're the water beads that come and it look like a little tiny pack of sand and then you put water in them and then they expand and they're like so much fun to play with. I know some people can use them, like use them like for plants and that kind of stuff. I've seen people use them so that way the, they just continuously stay watered. I don't know, I, anyway, they have a lot of stuff but they're for kids. This bin is for kids and it's really fun to play with. But we've realized, if we've had it for maybe a month now and they're starting to get a little bit slimy and we have a bunch of toys Right there, you can see them in the sink. And both the toys and these beads are starting to feel really like slimy. So I'm gonna put them in a colander here. I'm gonna put these in a the colander and really rinse them and give them a really nice, uh, like just with cold water, really rinse them off really well. Hopefully that'll get rid of the sliminess and kind of freshen them up a little bit because Gigi loves to play with these. They're too, Felicity's too young for this because they're just, she would probably eat them. But Genevieve loves it. And we've decided that we're gonna store all the toys away from this because we all kind of had them in the same bin. It's got a lid on it and I think that's probably probably part of the reason why the toys are starting to feel a little bit slimy. It's kind of like a water table. Like we have a water table we use during the summer. If we don't get those out of there, they start to feel kind of icky. Um, anyway, so we're going to, I'm going to clean all the toys too, and then have them stored separately. And then hopefully they'll, uh, they won't be like that. And when she wants to play with them, they'll be there. But anyway, uh, hopefully this will sort of, uh, reinvigorate these water beads. Cause they, I'm not going to lie. They're pretty fun to play with even for me. <laughs> Slimy, but satisfying. Okay, we are at the library. I took them. I took the girls here. Just honestly, it's one of our favorite things to do because there's a lot for them to play, and the kids' area is awesome. And then we, I mean, our books are always overdue, so we always need to return them and check out some more ones. Yeah, they love it, which is so cute. Okay, we've got cake pop and some lemon loaf. Me and this are sharing. 
We had fun at the library, but we are definitely, it's definitely nap time. Okay, I just got to uh, a big box hardware store. We, I went yesterday, like I said, to get that paint and we have a local hardware store that's like a locally family owned kind of thing, which I always try and go there first, but every once in a while, they don't have exactly what I need. They have like 80% of what I need for almost every project, but there's just some stuff they don't have or they'll be sold out or whatever. So uh, I have to get um, a couple things. I need to get an 18 inch roller for the floors of the garage. I figured that um, I have the, the handle and stuff like that, but I need an actual roller because that I figure it'll be a little bit faster and easier. I need to get the actual garage floor paint. And I know they have that here. Um, I need to get a couple other things too. I have to look at my list, but um, like I said, anytime that I can support a local business, I always try to, but every once in a while, they just, you know, you gotta go to the big box store. Also, I was thinking about it. Um, <laughs> I, I always carry like a, just a normal porcelain mug when I'm driving, not, not always, but a good majority of the time. And I was talking to our editor, Justin, and he <laughs> said he does the same thing all the time. And I'm like, good, I'm not alone. Does anybody else? Cause I'm like, if I'm going like for a long time or if I'm gonna be, but if I'm like, you know, just running up the street or something like that. And I just, I'll just bring my coffee mug with me. Cause I like drinking out of a porcelain mug more than I like drinking out of a to-go mug. So sometimes I bring an actual travel mug, but a lot of times I'll just bring this. Am I crazy? Am I alone? Just, just me and Justin, is that it? <laughs> I also just remembered my brother Austin does the same thing with the mugs. So the three of us do it. Are we alone? <laughs> But you know what? I'm pretty sure all of us are batting a thousand. I think, I don't think any of us have ever spilled any of it. I need some wood to go knock on, hold on. I'm editing yesterday's Vlogmas right now and I realized I was talking about the 300 workout and I just wanted to show if anybody's interested in doing it. I'm the kind of person who, when I go to the gym, not as often as I should, but when I do go, I like having like a plan, before, not just going in and wandering around like, eh, maybe I'll do that, maybe I'll do that. So for me, like having a workout plan is Awesome. So I'm just going to show you really fast what um, what I've been doing for my 300 workout. There's the specific 300 workout, and you can find that anywhere if you just look it up. Um, but this is the one I kind of modified it a little bit, and I'll show you what I'm what I'm doing. And I'm telling you, man, I am so sore. <laughs> like today, head to toe, I am sore. I mean, chest, abs, back, legs, everything is so sore. So like this has really got me excited. And as somebody, I mean, if I can only get to the gym two, three times a week, I'm sore for <laughs> two or three days after. So it's kind of awesome having, you know, something if I don't get to the gym very often, like this is kicking my butt and I feel like I'm getting a really good workout when I do it. So let me show you what I've been doing. I wrote it down here because I figured it'd be easier for me to just kind of show you. So the original 300 workout is 25, pull so you have 300 reps. So it's mo from the movie 300, you have 300 reps, uh, it's a whole thing. Anyway, so the original 300 workout is 25 reps of pull-ups, barbell deadlift with 135 pounds, 50 reps, push-ups, 24 inch box jumps, which is where you kind of stand there and then like do a jump up onto a, a box, floor wipers, which I had never heard of. And I looked it up and I didn't like them. You basically lay on the ground with 135 pound barbell above you and you're just kind of holding it there. And then you're doing like bicycles, not bicycles, but you're like, hold on. So you're doing like this. So like you have the barbell ahead of you, you know, or you're just holding it up and then you're like doing these leg lifts. Anyway, I tried to do that, hated it, hurt my lower back. So I stopped doing that. So I replaced that. The single arm clean and press with a kettlebell. I've done those before. I'm not a huge fan. I did it once this time. I didn't really like it either. So I kind of replaced that. And then you end with another 25 pull-ups. So that's the original 300 workout. And then here's my modified one. This is what I've been doing. I've done it seven times so far and it is killer. So I did the 25 pull-ups. I do the barbell deadlift with 135 pounds. That's where I just have the bar and you know, it's just a, a regular deadlift, 20, uh, 50 pushups. And then I do, instead of the box jumps, cause I don't like doing box jumps, I do the decline leg press, the one where you kind of like lay down um, and push the weight out. Hold on, let me show you. This machine here, I do 50 reps on this. Then I do 50 reps with an ab roller. Then I, like I said, I did that once. I don't really like that. So I'm, I don't really like that. So I just end up doing curls and I do hammer curls, which are like where your arms are like this and you're doing it. And then like this, um, I do 50 of each of those, um, an incline chest press, and then 25 pull-ups again. So depending on how you end up doing it, it ends up being 350 to 400 reps. But um, that's what I've been doing and it is, I'm really, really liking it. I feel like it's kind of got me like reinvigorated with working out. It's like gotten me really excited. So um, anyway, if you want me to post this anywhere, let me know because I can, if you like having something to, you know, sort of do. And then obviously just kind of like what I did, just replace things that you don't like to do. Um, like certain things, like I don't know why, like when I do 
bicycles and stuff like that. It just hurts my lower back. I don't know what it is and I've tried different things. So like just, you know, obviously change things as, as you want, but this is a great workout. I am telling you, man, it is kicking my booty. <laughs> Um, and one last thing is it takes me about 40 minutes, 40 to 45 minutes to do the whole set. So if I have a whole hour, what I'll do is I'll do that whole set and then I might tack on a couple of things at the end. Um, but I was reading like a lot of people who do it, like you sort of test to see who can do it the fastest. And some people can do it in like 20 minutes, 25 minutes, you know, just depending on a million factors, how fast you can do it. But anyway, that just want to let you know, that is about a 40 to 45 minute workout for me. And then if I really have a little bit more time, I'll go sit in the sauna and uh, that's, that's, that's my treat after working out. <laughs> okay, I just realized I have not like vlogged in a hot minute. Um, what, oh, okay. Well, I've been busy is really why. So we went to the library, as you saw, which was just lovely. So I've been spending a little bit of time planning for our like holiday party we have with our friends. We had, I might have explained this a few days ago. Do you remember? But basically we had one in 2019. It was just a mixture of friends we know that didn't necessarily know each other. So it was just fun and it was, ex I don't know, we love to host and it was just, we loved it. So we were excited to do it again, like legitimately this year. And so we've got all kinds of friends coming. And so I wanted to plan and prep because it's in literally a few days. So I've got, I've compiled some recipes. I was on Pinterest and Google and everywhere finding some recipes for different things. Um, and of course we will show you what we end up making in the spread and stuff. Cause, um, hopefully it'll end up being pretty cute, but I also pulled out cookbooks and I'm like a little overwhelmed because dessert wise, I wanted to have like, um, we'll have some sort of Christmas cookie. We'll make probably our thin mints cause you can make so many and you can make them ahead of time and they freeze well. So we'll make those, but I was like, I don't really want to have another cookie. And I have a strong suspicion. Some people will bring Christmas cookies but I wanted to have another dessert that's maybe one that you can hold, like they're, you know what I mean, individual ones, that's not a cookie, not a cupcake. I don't know. Let me know if you have any ideas. Lemon bars. Hey, get a little weird. I Those lemon, lemon things bars, we had at our- Those were really good. Oh my gosh. They were like little pastries with just a little bit of like- Lemon, lemon in, cream the in the middle. So good. Um, but like maybe something different so yeah. someone doesn't want chocolate. Yeah. Um, I'm in charge of the games though, and I don't really know what I'm doing yet, but I'm excited about that. So I've gotten a lot of that planned, but I need, I wanted to run some ideas by Tyler now that he's home because just get his opinion on a few of the things I'm thinking about doing. Um, and we got to figure out like when we'll make certain things, what we can make ahead. Also, will we have enough room in our oven? Like, am I baking too many? <laughs> and then we'll need to make the grocery list and actually go to the store maybe tomorrow. We'll see. Oof, um, I don't know. Maybe May. I don't know. We're... Oh, I don't, I don't need no you time. to go with me. I'll go. You'll, <laughs> okay, okay, you'll just yeah. weigh me down, babe. Okay. I don't know. I don't know how else to say this. But... Okay. <laughs> no, no. Anyway, we'll figure that out. But, but it was good. It was kind of nice because this has been on my plate for a while and I've been meaning to actually sit down for an hour or so and plan it. Now I feel like we've actually got a, a decent plan in place, give or take. It will happen either way. <laughs> oh, I also was FaceTiming with my parents. Um, and... Yeah, I, and yet again, year like three that I've had our Braun Family Cookbook binder. And I always say, I'm gonna organize that and put like, all I need to do is literally organize it. And I, it's been years and I still haven't done it. It's like a 45 minute project. It's a 45 minute project. Like we could have on a Christmas movie and I could just spread this out. Half the recipes in here are ones that I printed once, we tried and we were like, don't like, those can be recycled. I can't Why have I not done it? When I decide I'm gonna do a project, I do it right away. And definitely don't wait four years. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't sound like you at all. <laughs> anyway, so that might be something I try to tackle. Maybe do not. No. Anyway, we'll figure it out. <laughs> I, got, I got big plans, you guys. Okay, some of the library books we got. We love Sandra Boynton books. We own quite a few, but that's not one I've read. This one was just a cute, like, nighttimey one. Bear and Mouse, Time for Bed. This one looked so cute. A winter walk in the city. It, it literally just goes through like counting, but it's just wintry. And I don't know why, but this just made me smile. It reminded me of a snowy day. I love that book so much. Then these slide and see books. We are, she really likes these. And then Gigi picked out some really cool, kind of old school. Look how old school this one looks. Mickey and the Beanstalk. 
some other Disney ones. She just had to have this Halloween one. We were in the Disney section just by happenstance. And then we got a Bluey book. What else we got? Oh, five little ducks. That's a Lizzie one. And then I wanted to read her this one. My teacher is a monster. <laughs> it's cute. Hi, Pinocchio. Hi, handsome. You're wagging that tail. Mm -hmm. All right, dinner time. We're doing bath time before dinner because it was the only way it was happening. You can hear that going on right now. We're doing salmon, lentils, and Brussels sprouts for dinner. We have got Brussels sprouts, so I just trimmed and halved all of these, and I just have olive oil, salt, and pepper. We have another fancier version we do with these, honestly, typically when Tyler makes them with balsamic, and there's like a whole process, but um, I was craving Brussels sprouts. I'm the one that put this on the meal plan, and I just want them as they are. Sometimes we'll drizzle a little balsamic the last few minutes just to give it a little bit of that, because I do like that flavor too, but I am a huge Brussels sprouts fan. Um, I am working on the lentils right now. The Brussels sprouts are already in the oven. This is one of those dinners that timing wise it's not gonna work out great because I'm doing the salmon at the end and it's a recipe I've never tried, but some of it was just like the lentils are a little more involved <laughs> than I realized and I even found a different recipe to use and it's still a little more involved. So I feel like not everything's gonna end at the same time, which always stresses me out when I'm like, Jessica, <laughs> It's not that deep. So um, I need to get to work on the salmon, but first I need to add the lentils to the pot. Okay, so we've got the lentils going. Um, I can link the recipe I'm using. We'll let you know in this vlog if they're good or not. It called for like Italian seasoning, some turmeric, onion, um, salt, pepper, you know. Um, but we did not have cumin it called for and we were totally out. So I've added it to the grocery list, but that might affect how it tastes. I guess we shall see. Now, this is the salmon recipe that we're making from Ina Garden Modern Comfort Food. Um, it looks so good. TBH, it's more involved. Like, I didn't realize the food processor was involved. I'm like, Ugh. so we're going to do it because we have all this stuff, and I, I'm just craving this kind of salmon with an aioli. It just sounds so good. But, like I said, it... I don't know. I don't think it's that difficult, but it's just one of those recipes that's very specific. Like, do this for three minutes, then let it rest for three minutes. Like, it's very particular, so I'm going to have all of my attention on this here in a few minutes. Really, once I get these lentils to boil, it'll simmer, and I'll put a lid on it for quite a while. So I'll have time to focus on that. The Brussels sprouts are cooking, and we'll just have to keep them warm because um, they'll definitely finish before. I think it's going to be pretty good. I really hope it is because I've got high hopes. <laughs> Jessica and I went upstairs for five minutes. Jessica had just finished dinner. And if this isn't a metaphor for our lives at, the, at our current season of life, I, I don't know what is. What? This dog. I don't know. This has happened like three or four times in the last like two months. I don't know if the trash can doesn't close all the way but it, it, it automatically, I don't know if he's figured out how to open it himself. I, I really don't know. I need to set up like a camera and just see what happens. He gets into the trash and gets everything all over. There was obviously the, the, like the paper, the butcher paper from the salmon tonight. And I think that's what caught his nose. And now there's all this. Oh, Pinocchio. What are we going to do with you, buddy? What do you have to say for yourself, young man? Pinocchio. Why would you do that? Pinocchio. Why did you do that? Guilty. Guilty. <laughs> all right, here it is. I am very curious to try all of this. Welcome to the cutting board. <laughs> I've got a new purse, you guys. Is it cake? <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so... I've been using my Unique Low purse, if you saw. It was a vlog on my channel not too long ago. I did like a what's in my purse. I thought I'd ordered this a while ago on Amazon. I went back through my orders. I was like, oh, I didn't. So I ordered it for real this time because I am really into houndstooth right now. Is this not the most 1998 purse you've ever seen? You can do it crossbody. It also came with a like just shoulder strap. So it's shorter, which is what I'm going to do right now. It's the perfect size to fit my phone whenever I get it back. <laughs> I even tried, by the way, to get on Verizon and like try to figure stuff out. And it was trying to text a code to my phone, RIP. I'm like, you guys. <laughs> so I think I need to go into the store or call 
Well, and the, the other one, the other one is being shipped. It's just taking forever. I don't know what. Disney, it's there's no update, so I'm like, I don't know. Anyway, we'll get it figured out. I know first world problems. Phones will survive. Anyway, that aside, whenever I get my phone back, but like a slim wallet, a phone, like I almost said laptop keys. What am I even talking about? I don't know, man. Lip balm keys would all fit. Anyway, there's a zipper. I feel like that's the kind of purse you'd see like Princess Die wear. Yes, yes, exactly. I gotta figure out how to attach this. But it's so cute, and it's like actual like cloth. There's like a little shimmer in the black part, which I didn't expect. Wow. It actually feels pretty darn well made, I have to say. Um, so I just wanted to share that because I'm very excited. I've been waiting for this for a month because I thought I'd ordered it and I never did. Um, why do I not know how to do this though? Is it uh, you like you'll put it in and then? Oh, I see. Look it up, you guys. Come on. Obviously. Oh, uh, there you go. You can do it through the thing and then through the thing. I gotta puncture it through. But anyway, I am excited. I hope you guys love it as much as I do. It's just giving me all the vibes. You're right, Princess Die. Which reminds us, when we're through with the morning show this season three we're on, yeah. we need to watch... The Crown. Oh my gosh. Um, hey. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I have a topic of discussion tonight. Okay. I was thinking... The other day when I was at the post office and it was absolute chaos, yeah. December 4th, 5th, whatever day that yeah. was. And I was like, how was it already this busy? It was crazy. Yeah. I was looking around inside and then I came outside. I had two realizations, two very different realizations. One, I was waiting in line for the self-serve kiosks mm -hmm. that they had there. I don't mm -hmm. know if any of your guys' post offices have that. They're really, really nice. nice. Yeah. Um, the line for the actual people to help you was mm -hmm. probably 20 deep. Like wow. 20 step, okay, 15. Okay. It was long. Like yeah. I was like, Oof, glad I don't have to go on that line. <laughs> so I'm in a line of like four people for the like six yeah. self-service kiosks. Yeah. So I'm waiting and my normal self would have, well, what would you have done if you're waiting in line? What would you do? What oh, would be I thought we instinct? were waiting for them to answer. No, no them too, you too. What would you do? You're waiting in line at the post office. Like Dora the Explorer. All I'm there for, I had already dropped off the packages because they were like already done. I'm waiting to just get stamps. So there's nothing in my hands. What would you do? I assume you would look at your phone. Right. So without having a phone, I'm like looking at my watch. I'm like, oh, there's nothing to look around, at on here. Yeah. yeah. So then you just start to people watch. And I had this moment where I was like, this is what we all used to do. <laughs> and maybe some of you guys still do. Maybe you're better than me. In a good yeah. way, and you don't look at your phone. You know, it's funny. So literally, I am working on that right now because I notice exactly that. I mean, if I have 30 seconds, yeah. I will oh, pull my phone. Out. Seconds. So I've been really trying a lot recently to do exactly that, to just leave my phone in my pocket and just look around. Just be like, where? what am I looking at right now? Where am I? Like, be in the moment, even if it's something stupid like at the post office. Yeah. And just like observe my environment. And it's yeah. so funny because even just the couple months I've been trying to make this a point to do this, you see the craziest stuff and Everyone is looking at their phone constantly. Anyway, so anyway, that's funny that you were kind of forced to do this because I've been trying to do Maybe exactly this. Is, this. I, I like to think it's God like, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> See? <laughs> but yeah, I didn't discover anything crazy. It was just that even in those few moments, I'm always looking at it. Yeah, so it was yeah. kind of refreshing. It made me realize how not often I am in the real world. Yeah. And you know what I mean. And it was kind of, not scary, but kind of sad to be like, even these dumb moments, like, that don't really matter in life. You're just standing in line. You're not talking to anyone. You're not, but you're just, we're so in the virtual world. I know yeah. you guys are watching a YouTube video. I watch YouTube. We, we're all doing the same things. Yeah. But it was just one of those moments. So I want to try to, once I eventually get my phone back, I would like to try to be more conscious of that too. Yeah. Do you guys just, ever look at your screen time? Oh. If you take your screen time for a day and times it by... 365 or take your week times it by 52 weeks in a year tells you how much of a year of your life you have spent on yeah. your phone and then you multiply that by 30 40 50 years like well there's my I spent life. four years of my life on my phone yeah. like it's it it's terrifying yeah well and so again not to brag but that's one thing i really really work on is is not is and so you like are my, actually but really good it, at it but it's really hard because like i don't spend much time on my phone i'm i, I feel like i've knock on wood i've gotten really good about not mm -hmm. spending time on my phone and most of my time it's just like the maps on my phone when I'm driving places. That's like one it, thing I talked about. Oh, you adds, just edited. Did, did, did. Wait, was that today? Yes. No, it was yesterday. But it adds to the screen time. Yeah. And so like my my average screen time is like less than an hour a day, which is awesome. 
But I also work on a computer all day long. I work, you know, I, I always have the TV yeah. on. So, like, those screens are still screens. They're just different kinds of yeah. screens. So, it's not really any yeah, better. Yeah, if you have it's an addiction, different. it's TV. <laughs> yeah. If I have one, it's definitely my phone, without a doubt, yeah. hands down. Um, but, yeah, I want to work on that. I think this has been, I read that book, How to Break Up With Your Phone. Yeah. Really took a lot from it mentally, but then didn't apply much. So, this has been a nice little. It's funny. You know, that, was it? Two days ago, we talked about um, waking up at like 5 a.m. I read a book, probably, and again, I'm a pretty positive person. Probably the worst book I've pretty ever read positive. in my in my entire life. It was called The 5 a.m. Club. And it was the most weird, like, I've read a decent amount of like self-help kind of books. And mm -hmm. this was like, I can't, I don't even know what it was. Anyway, it did not inspire me to wake up at 5 a.m. Interesting. I kind of like to read it because sometimes you and I have differing views on books. So it was sort of this weird, like, he tried to, like, create this weird storyline where, like, these people met at a conference and then, like, at the end they got married and, like, there was some guy who was, like... Was it a fiction book or yeah, was it meant well, to be Yeah, but it was, like, he, this guy was, like, 70 years old and had a six-pack and he was, like, teaching these young a people... Beer or... <laughs> and how to wake up at, at, at 5 a.m. every day and... But it was all just them, like, talking at each other, these weird, like, well, do you know what what this person said? And, like, talking, like, random so quotes. So it was meant to be self-help, but in the... But they were talking quotes of other people the vessel at each of other. A it was horrible. It was horrible. That anyway, does sound interesting. Read it, because it was the most fascinating, terrible book I've ever read. Uh, but the um, uh, the guy, Robin, Robin something. Anyway, if anyone else has read that book, am I crazy? This was a couple years ago I read it. Has anybody else read it? And if so... Let me know. What was it called? The 5 a.m. Club? The 5 a.m. Club. Or if I have... remember when you finished that and I said, well, was it good? Because I was curious about it. Yeah. And you were like, no. <laughs> well, more importantly, do you have a book that actually inspires you to get up at 5 a.m.? Actually, I would love to read that because, you know. Yeah. Well, we've already talked about that. Yeah. Anyway, you had a, a keyword for today. My other, well, that, yeah. Oh, that what was we were getting that into. That was part We're of it. So my topic, second sorry. realization was, hi, bud. Hi, buddy. Hi, my handsome twins. Anyone curious, this is not a bark collar. It is a GPS tracker because we have a little sniffer and he loves to slowly sniff himself away from the house if yeah. he gets out. He doesn't, he like hardly ever yeah. gets out, but. And still. he never runs away. He but just. But the few times he did when he slowly, was younger, slowly like I mean, meanders. slowly meandered, it was very scary. So yeah, it's called a whistle. It is amazing. Um, My, there's yeah. an app that like would alert you if he's outside of your like GPS zone. And it's a really couple cool. of vlogmases ago, my brother's mm -hmm. dog, um, and I think, what did I say? My dog's brother <laughs> got lost. My brother's dog, and then, uh, but anyway, that, he, his dog now has a whistle. Yep. So anyway, highly recommend. Um, okay, what were we saying? Okay, my other realization. This is dumb. <laughs> it is truly dumb. So we live in a climate that has four seasons. Indiana, it we have a typical winter with snow. It's cold. Not anywhere near as cold as like farther north, like Canada and stuff. But it, we have very cold winters, and. Um, my reason for saying that is one realization I've had is that people in Indiana will hold off. So anyone I feel like that has true winters will hold off as long as possible before actually pulling out their real winter coat. I'm walking around. I'm not wearing one. I'm wearing like a sweater or whatever. I'm getting away with whatever I can. And I'm looking and people are in like shorts and like hoodies. They're in all kinds of, is he so, being needy? Just go ahead. Keep talking. So anyway, I was like, Whatever, whatever. We're just talking. So he thinks we're talking. <laughs> I love when he does that. He's like, come on, more, more, more. I'm going to start doing that to you. Give me a massage. <laughs> just keep doing it. You're such a good boy, Pinocchio. <laughs> anyway, it's just funny to see, like, people just getting away with as close as possible to a coat without it actually being a coat. And I then we all, like, decide, fine, it's cold enough. I wore a t-shirt yesterday. Because I couldn't, I'm like, I, I'm waiting until the very last minute. I also feel like when I was a kid, I would wear like a shorts and t-shirt outside because mm -hmm. I was trying to be cool. You know what I mean? Oh in yeah, it's like wearing your like, book bag oh, on yeah, one shoulder so cool. when you're in, yeah. 100%. So then I got older and I started wearing a coat like, because it was like, yeah, it's cold and it doesn't make you cool to not wear a coat. But now I feel like I've gotten to the point where I don't wear a coat because I'm like, I don't know why. I feel like Indiana winters are bad, but they're not really all that bad. So a lot of times if I can get away. You know you're not going to be outside for an extended yeah. period of time. So you're like, I, I'm just going in and out. Yeah. So a lot of times I'll just wear a hoodie or something and I just feel like. It's job. Yeah. I also always think about like, okay, well, it's not as, you know, it's much colder in Alaska or it's much colder in Norway. And like when I have that mindset, I'm like, yeah, it's not so bad. Well, here. that's an interesting mindset because we ain't in Norway. Yeah. But I don't know. I feel like having yeah. that mindset, I'm like, yeah, it's not so bad. 
Yeah. I know I definitely am of the camp of if I'm running in and out, but then I always have my parents in my head like, if you get in an accident, you're going to want a coat. So I always bring it. Yeah. Whether I wear it or not, I bring it to the car. Yeah. And the girls always have their coat. Yeah. But see, then there's that. Like you can't, especially with like the younger babies, you're not supposed to buckle them in with their coats. So you have to bring them into the yeah. car without the coat, buckle them in so they're safe. Then when you get them unbuckled, you got to put the coat on to get out. And it's yeah. like, oh my God. And you're just like running into the house. So well, half the yeah. time we'll run in, wrap a blanket around them. If we're literally running from our car, 10 steps into yeah. Nana's house. Yeah. Well, I remember I did that one time with my mom. You're like, where's your, where's her coat? And I'm like, well, technically you're not supposed to have a coat anymore. And so, you know, I'm, I'm like, like I'm literally going from your driveway inside the house. Like, so I'm not going to put the coat yeah. on. Like, well, and we're, ta coat? we're talking like 45 degrees, not like negative five. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Fahrenheit. Anyway, we could go on and on. But yeah, it was just kind of a funny realization. I'm like, yeah, I bet yeah. it's even crazier when you get farther north where they're, it's just crazy cold. They're yeah. like, they got tougher, thicker blood. Yeah. They're a hardened people. They're, that's right. <laughs> we were talking about in Chicago. They're a hardened people in Chicago. They have to deal used, with yeah. those those winters. But see, there's part of me, like, in Chicago, I almost feel like when you've got big-time winters, you just embrace it right off the bat because you're like, I'm outside waiting on a train well, for 30 minutes. Well, that's very true. So you go to the full-fledged long coat right away because you're like, I'm not messing around. I'm not, yeah. I don't want to be yeah. cold, so I'm just going to go all in. So anyway, yeah. these are my important realizations I've had in the past week. <laughs> I haven't had any. <laughs> I have had zero thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Uh, the situation Oh, we didn't talk about me. dinner. <laughs> it's not one I'm familiar with. Um, Robert California. Um, from the office. Bob Kazimakis. <laughs> what was I just going to say? Oh, dinner. Thoughts. Loved it. I loved it. Yeah. The Really, the aioli made it. I mean, I mean, everything was really good, but I, I kind of just mixed everything together. I'd get like a Brussels sprout, some lentils, and then some salmon all in a bite with the The animals. Brussels sprouts were perfect as is. They just had to stay warm for too long because I was trying to finish, the, like I told you, and we were also getting like Felicity and deal with, anyway. Yeah. The Brussels sprouts were perfect. Cleaning I will link Pinocchio's that recipe. Trash. I'll link the recipe. Like these are all from certain blogs. Like they're not going to be on our site, but because um, the Brussels sprouts was the very, most simple, but if you've never done it that way, I thought it was perfect. Um... The lentils were pretty good, but I don't know that I need to do that recipe again. But if you need a basic, good, like, flavored lentil recipe, I would say it was good. It was, like, 20 minutes, one pot. Um, anyway, the salmon itself, again, had to wait for too long before we could actually yeah. eat it. So I think it would have been a little bit better. Um, but, yeah, the aioli, I would make 10 times over. Did we talk about the salmon, though, that we got fresh salmon? Yes. Well, you tell it because you were there. Okay. I heard Long from, story short, yeah. we we always buy frozen salmon and then we thaw it and we use it that way. That's the only, that's what we've always done. Mm -hmm. This time though, I went to the like the seafood counter and got salmon. I don't know why this idea. We used to go to the deli counter to get like our you know lunch meat and that kind of stuff. But going to the butcher and mm -hmm. like asking for salmon, I don't know why that idea never occurred to me. Me either. I know. I, well, and I, it didn't occur to me. I get a little freaked out when there's like, do you call it skin yeah, on the, skin the salmon on still? You can just ask them to cut it off. Well, and a lot of times I'll and buy so it did. and I'll fillet it at home. I'll just kind of take that off yeah, at yeah. home. Um, but they. But I mean, honestly, when you can just ask them to do it and it's no yeah. extra charge. Yeah, and it's sure. fresh. I mean, that's, fresh, yeah. yeah. So. so so the salmon yeah. itself, it was good. But the aioli really made it. We're a sauce family. <laughs> yeah, definitely a sauce. I've always said I'm going to make a shirt that says, like, more sauce, more sauce, more sauce, or something on it, like, eventually. Yeah, that would be very much on brand. Yeah. I'm a anyway. very... Yeah, even you... We, we like sauce as a family, but I... And like too I like sauce, but I don't put a lot on it. Mm, like right. I like it with it, but I I'm not apply, applying like it's makeup. I'm not applying a, a big thick layer. I'm in it you for the sauce. You are in it for the sauce. I could eat cardboard with sauce on. That's yeah. just what I like, and you can all leave me alone. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it's, right. Everyone likes what they like. Just leave them alone. <laughs> anyway, uh, anything else important to say? We've been talking for a I long time. So. All right. Well, if we think of anything else, we'll see you guys tomorrow. How much do we love you? Getting closer, guys. See you tomorrow. <laughs> he didn't deny it. <laughs>